Good morning, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable start to your week. I hope that you have a clear idea of what it is you want to accomplish this week. I hope that you have a set uh, plan in action and in motion. Yes, you may have to make some adjustments along the way. Yes, you may encounter some some disruptions but if you have a plan and you're focused and if you're headed in a specific direction you can measure your movement you can measure your progress you can make the necessary adjustments and you may not get there at the exact time that you desire to but if you can consistently pursue that thing that you want you will get there just remember that look i'm excited as always about the things we're doing at the visionetics institute i'm excited about the work that i'm doing with my clients uh by the way uh even though it's not in the description box if you're looking uh for an opportunity to work with me on a one-on-one -on -one, uh basis in a one-on-one -on -one capacity i do have two slots that have come open you can reach out to the visionetics support team uh, and inquire about how to get that done. Uh, you can reach out at life, life change at Rick Wallace, PhD dot link. Again, that's life change at Rick Wallace, PhD dot link. Good morning, Kim. Uh, speaking, speaking of, uh, clients, uh, Kim is one of my clients. I think she's more than likely watching on Facebook. I'm streaming on a number of different platforms right now, but I'm pretty sure she's watching on Facebook. Uh, it's uh, always good to have you drop in, Kim. Uh, also, we are now doing, I am now accepting clients for the 30-day holistic transformation. Uh, that is a 30-day process where we prime and reshape it. Uh, think our uh, thought processes, reshape our focus and center on change, whether it's a weight loss journey, whether it's a relationship journey, whether it's a new career journey, whether it's changing your finances, whether it's pursuing a new career, starting a business, whatever it is, it starts with a change of thought. It starts with a mental focus. Uh, the holistic transformation is about achieving all of those things you want by creating the right mindset. You don't just have to focus on weight loss. You don't just have to focus on uh, changing your financial situation. You don't have to just focus on launching your career or your new dream, whatever that is. You can literally center and invest in yourself in a way that you put yourself on the proper trajectory. This is about hard work. And no, you're not going to get the dream in 30 days, but you'll be well on your way. You'll be focused. That'll be a new change, a new outlook, uh, a new feeling of accomplishment. And all of those things serve you well in the pursuit of what it is that you are setting out to do. The link is in the chat box on most platforms. Uh, some some platforms won't allow me to post the link uh, but on most of the platforms i'm looking and the link is hit it it hit uh some of them it didn't hit my facebook uh personal account but it did hit uh the business account uh the black owned business network it hit the visionetics institute youtube channel it also hit periscope which is twitter's uh streaming feed so it hit a bunch of places but it, it's still in the description box no matter where you're watching it Click that link and become a part of the beginning of change. Uh, it's it's steeped in value. It's one of the most affordable things that I offer right now. Uh, so if you're looking for an entry level way to get in and work with yours truly uh, on a short term basis, this is it. I prefer long term engagement. Most of my clients work with me anywhere from uh, uh, 12 weeks to a year. Some of my uh, platinum uh, clients, which is a year, have read up for a second go at it because they have uh, achieved a lot in that time and they want to take it to the next level. So I've worked with some people up to two years or more uh, before they move on and start doing things on their own. That's the goal to get people to a place where they're so in control of their life that they break away and go about their business. Of course, I get people who call me back every now and then and check in and say, guess what I'm doing? I just had one of my clients that I worked with for a couple of years. Uh, uh, interior design business is taken off, uh, engaged to be married, 
a bunch of things just really changed. And, uh, and you know, and it's all about that mindset. It's all about preparing yourself for success. You know, one of the things that I find out is a lot of people are sitting around waiting. They're waiting for the right moment. They're waiting for the right opportunity. They're waiting for a time in which they feel they won't be heavily criticized. They're waiting for a time when failure is less likely. You've got to stop waiting. You've got to stop sitting around waiting on something to happen. And you've got to get into your mindset that you're going to make something happen. I believe it was George Bernard Shaw that says the people in the people in this world who get on in this life are the ones who wake up in the morning and find the opportunity that they're looking for. And if that opportunity does not exist, they create it. That is the life that you have to live. That's the life that I have lived. Everybody that I have studied who have who has achieved any level of success has come into a situation and they've had to fight. They've had to sweat. They had to push through it. But you know, the difference between them and most people who view that is they didn't see the struggle as a struggle. They saw it as a process. They saw it as something they absolutely had to go through in order to have what they want. The problem with most people is they want something that they're not willing to put in the work. They are not willing to invest in. They're not willing to go the distance for. They want it. But here's the thing. Uh, it's been said multiple times, multitudinous times. I say it all the time. In order to have the things that most people do not have, most people do not experience, most people do not even encounter, you've got to be willing to do what most people don't do. You can't keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. You can't be meandering around them in the maze of mediocrity, express, expecting to experience greatness. Greatness does not happen in the pool of average. It does not happen in the pool of mediocrity. You've got to change the people you're around. you got to get around quality people doing quality things, achieving exceptional results. You've got to learn how to behave like they behave, talk like they talk, think like they think. You're going to be the average of the five people you spend the most time around. If you look at your phone right now and look at your last five text messages from different people, those are the people who are probably influencing your life the most. Where are they at? What are they doing? What can you gain from them? What do they bring to the table? This is not making yourself appear or seem better than anyone else. What is sitting up and saying is that I know without a shadow of a doubt what it is I have to do, and I'm going to go out and find it. I'm going to go out and do it. It's going to take me out of my comfort zone. That's a guarantee. You're coming out of your comfort zone. If you want to do something you've never done before, you're coming out of your comfort zone. It's just going to have to be. Comfort comes from familiarity. The problem is the things that you have become familiar with don't serve you well. You're familiar with getting up every day, going to the same job, getting the same results, unhappy. Do you know 85% of the people in this country wake up every day and go to a job they hate? They've been convinced that it's an absolute must. Why? Because they're functioning in survival mode and survival mode tells them that they absolutely have to go here because there's no other alternative. There's no other option. The people who actually get on in life sit up and say, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life in misery. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life making someone else wealthy while I literally sit up miserable every day. I, there was a viral video that was, I don't know if it's still hot and viral now, but a few weeks ago, well, this woman was talking about arriving at her job and how she had to get out and go in that job and pretend for eight hours that she actually gave a, you know what, about being there. And she was just ranting about it. And so it went viral. And then everybody started doing covers of it and doing, you know, using her voice, but acting it out. And it became viral. But it was representative of, of so much of what we deal with today. Getting up and going to a job we hate. Getting up and going to a job we stress out. Do you realize that over 80% of first heart attacks happen on Monday morning between 5 a.m. and 12 noon. You know what's happening on Monday morning at five between 5 a.m. and 12 noon? Most people are going back to work for the first day of the week and have another five days at a job they absolutely hate that's driving them nuts and stressing them out.
It's literally killing them. They are committing slow suicide, spiritual suicide, and even physical suicide by study investing in something that they don't even want to do, that they feel they have to do without ever exploring the alternatives and options that are out there for themselves. Why? Fear of failure, fear of what someone else is going to say, fear of, uh, of uncertain outcomes. But the thing is, if you don't face the fear, you're never going to get or achieve anything that is of any true value. Why? Like Will Smith said, God placed everything worth having on the other side of fear. You're going to have to navigate some fear in order to achieve. You're going to have to get into some places you're not comfortable in. You're going to have to take some risk. That's it. You don't gain anything. Ask any investor in this world, can you win and gain and have success without taking risks? No. Now, you need a certain level of risk aversion. You don't want to go out there just jumping into everything, throwing everything at everything and because you'll be all over the place and you will get beat up and you will lose. But you've got to educate yourself. You got to learn. You got to learn about yourself first. How do I move? How do I function? Where do I thrive? What am I just naturally good at? What can I have an immediate impact and create value in the workforce where I can actually step out and do it on my own or walk into a business and demand a certain level and a certain position and a certain way of engagement so that even if I am working for someone else, I'm working on my terms because I have value in what I do. Yes, you can. You can literally walk into someone else's business and say, I have something to offer you. If you hire me, these are the terms that you have to hire me by. This is what you have to pay me. These are the things I'm demanding from you. And you walk in and you deliver. When you deliver the way you said you're going to deliver, they're going to handle their business. Why? Because you are an asset to them. You can do that for them or you can step out and do it for yourself. There's absolutely no limitations to what's possible. I do it with my clients all the time. Kim is on here. As Kim and I were actually talking, what's the day? We were talking yesterday. We were talking about where we were when we started and where we are now. And I didn't bring it up. She brought it up. And that's a common conversation. That's the thing. It's a step-by-step -step process. It's in small increments. You don't recognize it when it's happening because it's in small increments. You don't get the big quantum leaps all the time. Most of your life is going to be making small steps in progress. But what? guess what happens? You're going to look up one day and you're going to look back and say, man, I don't resemble anything like what I was a year ago, like what I was two years ago. That's the goal to consistently make moves and make press. That's why I'm encouraging people. Like I said, I have two slots for long-term clients. Again, I'm not the cheap person. It costs to work with me, but I deliver results. I absolutely deliver results. I have a 99.9 .9 something uh, success rate. The only people that have not succeeded are the people who didn't finish. And that was only like two. I get it done. But if it ain't with me, you got to find somebody. But then if you can't, if you, you don't think you're ready now, that's what this uh, new offering. Uh, well, it's not new. I've been doing the holistic 30 day challenge uh, periodically for years. But this 30 day holistic challenge will at least get you started. It will get you on your way. It will allow you to get your feet wet in a world where you've got to actually find someone who knows how to get you to the next level. It's going to take years off of the process. I've been doing this in one way or another for 30 years. The disciplines that I've mastered to help other people in their lives, it's like crazy. I've written 24 books that in some way has to do with betterment across the board, whether it's for a collective or whether it's for, whether it's for an individual. Critical Mass has done exceptionally well. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is that it doesn't matter what's out there if you don't change your thinking, if you don't get to a point where you're willing to do something about your situation. Finally. That's the part. Stop waiting. Stop waiting on the perfect opportunity. It does not exist. Stop waiting on the right timing. There's no such thing as the right timing. The right timing is the moment that you, you determine there's a change that needs to take place. That's the right timing. Right then, right there, right now. Take the, take the leap. Make the move. Do something about it. Now, here's the next thing. It's a bunch of you caught up. And that's why I know there's somebody out there that really needs to work with me now. There's a bunch, there are a bunch of you that have been frustrated because you're confused about fault and responsibility. What do I mean by that? Some of you are hurting right now because somebody did something to you. 
so, somebody out there, multiple people out there, you're right now stuck because someone did something to you and hurt you. It was their fault. And now you're waiting on them to realize it was their fault and come back and fix what they broke. But see, what you don't understand, fault and responsibility are not inter nat naturally or automatically or inherently inter inter interconnected. Just because somebody's at fault for something doesn't mean that they're going to be responsible for fixing it. See, they did something to you that caused you pain, that did something internally, that hurt you in whatever way you were hurt. It's your responsibility to pick up the pieces. If they never get it, you still have the responsibility of picking up the pieces and, 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 and healing and, and taking control of your life. That's your responsibility. It was their fault, but it's your responsibility to fix it. Why? Because they'll move on with their lives. I've seen it happen. People move on with their lives, grow out of the stupidity that caused them to cause you harm and move on with their lives and have great lives and people will be stuck. You know what? Somebody told me, holding on to that anger and that bitterness, hoping that someone either gets it and or, or, or fails or falls or goes through pain is like taking poison and hoping someone, hoping someone else dies. You got to work on the healing for yourself. You got to elevate yourself. You got to take yourself to the next level. You got to make up in your mind that what they did to you didn't break you, that what they did to you didn't cause you to fold. What they did to you didn't write the end story to your life, that you literally have the ability to rise up out of whatever state you're in right now and determine in your life, whether it was your parent, whether it was your mate, whether it was your child, whether it was your whatever. You've got to make up in your mind that this is not the end of the story. You're going to pick up the pen of your life. You're going to write a new narrative. You're going to stand up. You're going to walk out there. You're going to go get something that you know you deserve. And it's not going to be dependent on whether the person who hurt you ever acknowledges that they hurt you, ever acknowledges that they owe you an apology, ever comes back and tries to help you heal. That's not on them anymore. It's on you. It's not on the new person that comes along. It's on you. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to engage and change? Are you going to rise up and make up in your mind that you're going to do something that turns your life around? Nobody else is going to do for it. I'll reiterate this one more time. George Bernard Shaw, the people who get on in this world are the people who wake up every morning and go out and find the opportunity they are looking for. If that opportunity does not exist, they create it. That is how the people who are winning in this world get on. In 2012, those who know me know all the things I was able to do up until the mid 2000s. And then things start to go awry. Uh, some decisions I made out of arrogance because I had been so successful were, were starting to bite me in the butt. But but I, I, I realized what I was doing and I made the change. But the problem is the momentum of negativity didn't stop because I had realized the era in how I was thinking and reshaped my thing. I started to work on my legacy and not so much on material things and, and how people perceive me and proving to people what I could do. And but 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 I had to deal with it. And I ended up in 2012, the worst year of my life. Lost a sister, lost a brother-in-law, lost almost th everything I had, was down to after having to, and, and I'm not throwing numbers out there, but people who know me know. When I say success, I'm talking success, things that people dream about success. And yet here I was with nothing flat on my face. And that was some people who played a role in it. It wasn't like I just went up and did something and fell off a cliff. No, I had help getting off the cliff, but I shouldn't have been on the edge in the first place. But I had help getting off. Now, what I could have did is I could have sit up there and focused on who was doing me wrong. I could have focused on all the people I helped who knew I needed them right then and wasn't there. I could have focused on a whole bunch of things. You know what I told God? And everybody's relationship with God should be personal. This isn't religion I'm talking about. I'm talking about one-on-one, -on -one, real tight communication with God in whatever way you communicate with. You know what I told God? You ain't got to get me out of it. Just wake me up. 
Just wake me up. I'm not begging to come because, see, I already learned in life a long time ago that it's in these challenges that I grow, that it's in these tough situations that I become stronger, wiser, more knowledgeable, more focused, that I get propelled into something else greater. I, In order to achieve the greatness I need, I've got to go through the storm. So my, 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 my agreement was simple with God. Don't let me die in this. Wake me up every morning and I'll answer the bell because I'm built for this. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to get up every morning and I'm going to work. I'm going to put in the work. I'm going to wake up every morning. I'm going to bless people. Man, I was going around to homeless shelters, teaching and sharing. I created food programs for homeless people so that they could get fed. All while I was going through all kind of hell that some of those people weren't even going through. Nobody knew it. Why? Because only the people that needed to know, I shared it with. But what I did is I made up in my mind, I'm, I'm coming out of the storm a better man than I went in. And those who know me know what I'm talking about. That's something my grandfather taught me at 17. Just come out the storm a better man than, than you went in, son. That's all you got to do is come out the storm a better man than when you went in. And greatness will overtake you. You don't even have to pursue greatness. If you make up in your mind that the storm is going to make you better and you work on yourself while you're in the storm and you work on your future while you're in the storm, you will come out a better man. And that's all I was focused on. Here I am. Uh, 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 nine years later, multiple companies, still nowhere near where I was at the height of where I was, but definitely were, uh, uh, beyond where a lot of people who were looking down at me were and are at this time. Sitting in my own office, a home office, a, a office in an office building, running multiple companies, helping people change their lives, feeding my family. It hasn't been easy, still not easy, still got a long way to go. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is that it's not about ease. It's about the process. The process always precedes the prize. And for those of you who are of the Christian faith, process always precedes the promise. A bunch of people want the promise without the process. A bunch of people want the prize without the process. You want to have the things you want, but you don't want to go through the process. You're going to have to go over the other side of fear to get it. You're going to have to go on the other side of pain to get it. You're going to have to put some sweat and some tears in it to get it. But when I, this is what I can tell you. I have never outworked the reward. I have never outworked the joy. I have never outworked the sense of fulfillment. What do I mean by that? How, however much blood, sweat, and tears I had to put into it, when I got what I was looking for, it was far more exceedingly greater than I thought it would be, and it was worth every pit, pinch of sweat I put into it. I, I, I would do it over again three times to get what I got out of the reward. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. The people that you will see that are living at a certain level, they put it in. They put in the work. I'm not talking about people who inherited the, 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 the rewards of their parents or their grandparents or great grandparents or our work. I'm talking about the people who started at ground zero and are living a life that most people look at and can't even fathom. Those are the people I'm talking about, not something someone gave them what they have. And even those, they're either going to lose it or they're going to multiply it. It's that it's that simple. No matter what you're giving, you're either going to lose it or multiply. I'm talking about people starting at ground zero and taking themselves to levels that you can't imagine. It's all about changing the mind, changing the focus, changing how you view things, establishing in yourself. I'm not going to quit. I'll say this and then I'll be done. People ask me all the time, you know, is it because of my academic success that I'm successful? you know, because of the degrees and all that? Is it because of, you know, my business? Is it because of who I know or uh, whatever? Actually, at the very core of it all, one word, relentless. I don't know how to quit. I don't know how to give up. Turning around is not an option. Matter of fact, um, I do a lot of speaking, uh, not as much as I used to, but I do. I've done a lot of speaking over the course of my life. I mean, as far back, I mean, I was public speaking before I was 10 
And one thing that if I go back to places that I've spoken at before and people who were there the last time are there, when I am introduced and I'm walking to the podium, there's a chant in the crowd, no surrender, no retreat, no surrender, no retreat. And that lets me know people there that heard me speak. That's a mantra. No surrender, no retreat. I don't give up. I don't quit. I don't turn back. I don't let go. I make up in my mind what I want. And then there, there's two options after I make up my mind. I'm going to either get it or I'll die trying. Either way, I'm good. But I will not quit. I will not leave a legacy of folding. So I ask you, what are you willing to do to live that type of life? Whatever that life is for you, nobody gets to define success for you. You got to look at it and you got to determine what will fulfill you in your life. And then you got to go get it. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Like I said, sign up uh, for... The, the link for the 30-day uh, holistic transformation is there. But if you want one of those two spots to work with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis, email uh, lifechange at rickwallacephd.link to find out what it takes to work with me. Yes, you're going to have to invest in yourself, but I guarantee you we are going the distance. We're going to get it done. You're going to walk out with a whole new uh, perspective. No matter what you choose to do, if you go for one of those two spots or if you want to uh, come in on the slow end uh, with uh, the whole issue transformation, do what you need to do. But whatever you do, you've got to stop waiting. Whatever you do, you've got to stop waiting. On that note, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, there's a question, and I don't want to leave seeing it and not answer it. Sometimes I don't get to see them. Um, uh, our, our Yvette Williams said, like what? And I'm not quite sure what that is. If you're still on, uh, could you explain to me what you mean? Uh, with like what? Because I, I I don't know what I was saying uh, when you said that. Uh, and so what it applies to, if you can just weigh in real quickly. Uh, I don't know how much of a lag. Uh, oh, OK, cool. Thanks, Nikita. Uh, uh, thanks. Uh, so I guess I can get off now. Uh, like I said, I look forward to working with some of you guys uh, and achieving some results. On that note, I'm going to get off of here. But like I always say, I live my life on full. I mean, literally every day I live my life on full so that I die on E. And all that means is I'm not going to take any of my potential to the grave with me. I'm going to live my life every day, giving life everything it has, everything I have so that I leave something behind that speaks of me after I'm gone. That's called a legacy. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day, and we will hopefully have a chance to work together. You guys take care.